This is the eighth order system here. So if you have something like this, you can do a route table. <coughs> you have to realize something like route criteria or route Horowitz criteria. You wouldn't think this would be very relevant in now because something like this you just you can use computers to figure out the routes right so why would you need route table why would you need route Harvard's criteria if you find the routes you'll know whether the routes are in the right or west half plane so you would know if this is something to think about think about this <coughs> So you have, so you construct your route table, yes, eight, and you populate, pre-populate the first two rows, right? You have one, 10, 48, 128, and uh, two 128, yeah, 128. Okay, and then you have three, 24, 96, 192. So what you can do here is, the first thing is you simplify this, 3, 1, 8, 3, 1. Right, so your S6 now would be 10 minus A, right? This would be 8 into 84 minus minus 320 over 8 and this is 32 Let's do this. 128, 32. I have 2, 16, 5, 2, plus 8. So let me just write down these from here. The two sixteen two sixteen sixty four one twenty eight. Say that again? So do you see these? You see that, right? So what happens here is S5 would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you cannot proceed. OK? 
Okay. So what you do is, in such a case, this. So you, if you do this minus this over eight, you're going to get sixteen. Yeah. You do that over eight, right? So when you do this, what you're going to do, if, if you encounter such a case, what you do, you're going to do is you're, you're going to construct a polynomial in this, the row above zero. Okay. So the polynomial is S six plus eight S four plus thirty two S square plus you see how I got this polynomial? I'm constructing this polynomial. Okay. P of S is this. So you have S6, S4, S2, S0. Hmm. This one? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You get eight? You have 384, 64 over 8 is 8. That's what you think? This one? For now, just we'll, uh, forget about the arithmetic. Assume there is a bunch of zeros. Okay. 
we'll we'll do that and see how to, how to address this row of zeros. We'll we'll talk about how to deal with row of zeros. Right, right. So you have a row of zeros. So what you do is you do p of s, and then you take the derivative of p of s with respect to s. This would be six s five plus thirty two s cube plus sixty four s right plus zero. So what you do is you replace these zeros. With the coefficients of these, so you have six, thirty-two, sixty-four, zero, and zero. Okay. So you have b sixteen, thirty-two, okay. and Now you keep continuing your this thing. So S4 would be simply uh, 24 minus 16 is 8 over 3. Okay. So this would be 8 into 32 minus 16 into 32. So it is. So sorry, 16 into 32 minus 8 into 32, which is 32 into 8 over 16, which is 16. Okay, and this would be 64 0. So this is how you tackle the route forward criteria when you encounter a row of zeros. Okay. This is right. Sixteen. Now, so so thirty-two into sorry sixteen into. Sixteen into thirty-two minus eight into thirty-two, which is six. Eight into thirty-two, right? Eight into thirty-two over sixteen. Two. Sorry, eight one two. Sixteen. I think that's right. If you are, you'll be given one problem where you'll have you'll have to deal with one special case and figure out if the system is stable or not. Okay. So whichever row is zero, the row above that. Right. Yeah. So what you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with coefficients for S5, right? The polynomial S5, and that is what you need to substitute for. Okay. We'll stop it here. So this wraps up stability. Okay. Next chapter we'll uh, discuss about steady state error and uh, that
that is your next exam will cover the block diagram reduction stability and steady state error Your exams, midterm exam, um, midterm exam actually was really easy, um, except for maybe get started. So, as I told in the last class, we are going to a new chapter. This will be on the next test. Chapter 5, 6, 7. 5 is, see, everything is. Um, right, block diagram and Mason's rule. Block diagram is something you have to work on. Mason's rule is very straightforward. Um, stability again, it's just route per which criteria. There are three things. The route table itself, you have uh, a zero in the column, first column, and a whole bunch of a zero row. Those are three cases, which is chapter six. There is not much, it's just one section. And the steady state error, you don't want to see this only in the final exam. You will just be overwhelmed. The steady state error is defined System response, right? And in the new open unit, in the This is the P of S, which is time T. Okay. And this is the right. So system response itself has divided into transient response and steady state so you can say this is the Transient region, region. This is the transient response. And this part is the steady state response. <coughs> so when we are talking about steady state response, Important characteristic of steady state response will be steady state error. And this is what your steady state error is defined as. Yes. 
that is the, it is the difference between the input signal and the output signal after a certain, after it reaches steady state. So this is you can say it reaches steady state at this point and that error, steady state error is the difference between the input whatever is being tracked and what the actual output is. Your desired for example the desired output is this dotted line, what is this is what you desire but your actual output or actual response is off by a certain amount that is your steady state response. Now when we deep talk about steady state response, we talk about steady state response in terms of UVT, feedback, This is a unity feedback system because what is being fed back is just the output signal. Here, the T of S this concept to this figure. What is the error signal? And we have talked about this error signal in the past. Where is this error signal? Right after the sum of numbers. Right after the sum of numbers. So this is your error signal, right? So error signal is essentially C of S, sorry, R of S minus P of S. steady state error E of S is this, but G, C of S is defined as E of S into G of S, correct? Therefore, E of S is equal to R of S minus E of S into G of S. So if you take it on the other side, E of S should be C of S into By definition, e, see this is how you define or this is a notation used for steady state error is
Does this make sense? So think about this. This is your E of S, right? E of S is the error signal expressed in terms of the frequency variable or the Laplace variable, right? If you want E of T, you're going to just take the uh, inverse Laplace, right? You're going to get this E of T. E of t is the error. Steady state error is just defined as E of t as t tends to infinity. Right? So if you look at when t goes to infinity, what is the error? That is your steady state. Okay. Easy enough? So it is represented by E of infinity equal to limit t tends to infinity as t tends to infinity of E of t. It's just a function of time. Function of time as time tends to infinity. Okay. By so if you this becomes limit and s tends to zero s e of t. This is how steady state error is expressed in terms of the Laplace transform of the error. So these two are equal in definition. Now if you apply this, This is the definition of steady state error in terms of G of S. Okay. Now, here, understand that why we are doing, why we are expressing this in terms, why we are trying to express this in terms of G of S. Okay. So any any system can be expressed as a unity feedback system. Okay. Even if you are given something like this, so for example, from the last lab, you had this, right? You had So this is not a unity feedback system, correct? No. Because this h of s is getting multiplied by h of s, but you can express this as a unity feedback system, and that's when it becomes fairly simple to adopt this particular definition of steady state. Okay. We'll look at we'll look at how to convert non-unity feedback systems to unity feedback systems and apply it. Look at what is P of this? P of this is P of this. 
Check this definition. T of S is this, right? This is also equal to T of S. This is how T of S is defined. T of S is the closed loop Ramsey function. G of S is the open loop Ramsey function. So T of S is that. Therefore, C of S would be E of S into R of S. But uh, what is R of S? E of S minus C of S. Or plus C of S. This is the definition expressed in terms of the closed loop transfer function T of S. These are the two definitions you can use. Can I erase this? No? You said that's the representation of it being. T of S. Closed loop transfer function T of S. For step input, we'll be using this definition by and large. Oh, 
को समझो so for step input what is the steady state error how do we define quite simply it is so here step input means r of s is simply 1 over n right so i am limit as s tends to 0 s into 1 over s divided by Here we do this. We use this step. One over one plus limit as s tends to zero. Okay. Similarly. So think about this. What happens here? You have this becomes one over s plus s g of x, right? And you have the limit as it stays. So what is what happens to this term? It simply goes to zero, right? Because S goes to zero. This goes to zero. That's the reason you get just limit of s tends to zero. S into zero. Right. Okay. Substituting this for, we want to define specific steady state error. We are defining it for specific input signal. What does ramp mean? It's for the input signal ramp input. So that R of S is one over S square. That's it. Keep in mind that if you remember this definition and you understand what R of S is. You can arrive at any other definition. Okay, it's not. You don't have to memorize this one, this one, this one. You really don't. It, it takes. It can take like 15 to 20 seconds for you to get to that part. Not more than that.
Take a look at an example. infinity or you define the infinity Step is equal to limit and distance to zero s into one over s one plus one into s plus two over s plus one into s so this cancels. We can use this direction, this uh, definition directly, but I'm just showing you how you can do it from the more fundamental definition. All you need to do is substitute s equal to zero. That's it. So here, so this would be if you substitute s equal to zero, what are you going to get? One over one plus. 120 into 2 divided by 3 into 4. You see it? You substitute s equal to 0. 0, 0, 0. There is no s in the numerator. This would be 1, this is 3, 12, 10. You have 1 over 21. So the infinity is. In the denominator, um, is there not a 1 plus the limit of uh, s approaching 0? That's what I showed you here. You have s in the numerator, right? Sorry, s in the s in the numerator and one over s square. Uh -huh. Okay. So this square s it cancels. Yeah, I see that. So s comes to the denominator. Uh -huh. S plus zero. What happens if you apply s if you make s equal to zero? This goes to zero, right? Okay. So the limit only applies to this this term. This is an example in book. Example. Example two seven point two, page three forty seven. So what is E ram? Can you do it yourself? Can you tell me what E ram is? Or the steady state error for ramp input. One over S times 
Right, what is the value? Yeah, tell me the value. Huh? Tell me the value. Do it and tell me the value. It would be one of the one one x one. Huh? What do you one? S will not be there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Do it. Because we are substituting s equal to zero. That's what we are doing. Do it. Everybody do it. You should be able to do this. infinity you uh, don't confuse with uh, undefined and infinity okay 1 over 0 over 0 is undefined infinity over infinity is undefined 1 over infinity 1 over 0 is defined 1 over infinity is 0 1 over 0 is infinity okay this is actually infinity okay so if you do what does this mean if you actually supply a step in, a ramp input to that particular system? It's going to always keep track. It's going to diverge, you know. It's, if this is your, this is what it is supposed to track. The the output is going to keep diverging away from the steady state error, right? So steady state error, this is how the steady state error is defined for ramp input, correct? Ramp input is, so this is going to keep on increasing and it's potentially going to go to infinity. So the system is not stable for ramp input, that's what. What is E parabolic? Is infinity again. We'll, do, we'll look at one more example just to give. I want to make a point. And this will lead you to the next discussion for next class.
here E F This would be what? 1 over 1 plus 100 into 2 into 6 over 0 into 3 into 4. So what is this? This goes to infinity. Okay. So this is one over infinity, which is zero. And he ran. See what happens is this S cancels with this S. When you substitute G of S here, it cancels with this S. But is it uh, isn't ramp 1 over S? Huh? I said isn't ramp 1 over S over S G S? Like I mean we did all of that. So this is after doing all of that, this is the specific definition. So you have so this is three with one more hand, right? And is simply infinite. You can substitute. So it's going to be S square into G of S, right? Which means one of the S is going to cancel, but there will be there's going to be a S. If when that becomes zero, it will be one over zero, which is infinity. There is a specific pattern here, and that is what I want to show you guys to. Look at this and look at this. Okay. This has a pure integrator term or a pure S term in the denominator. Do you see it? Yes. There is no S term in the denominator here. So, so this 1 over S term is called the pure integrator. Right. If the if there is no pure integrator, the steady state error for the step input only is finite. The steady state error for ramp and parabola is infinite. No integrator term. If there is one integrator term, just one. What that by that means one over s. The steady state error for step input is zero. The steady state error for ramp input is finite and the steady state error for a parabolic input is 
infinity. And there will be one more case where it will be s squared, 1 over s squared, that, are, that is 2 pure integrated. So in that case, this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be finite. Okay. So the pattern is finite infinity infinity, 0 finite infinity. 0, 0, finite. These are the three cases which you need to remember. And you can arrive at those cases by yourself without much trouble or without much effort. This is uh, section 7.2 and uh, we will talk about, we will extend this discussion which is in the next class. That is section 7.3.